some negative thought patterns are really just that, they're habits. They're habits. Habits are things you do without thinking about them. Right? So some people bite their fingernails. Some people, you know, will twirl, twirl their hair. Some people will crack their knuckles. Some people will... I mean, people have all kinds of little habitual, quirky things they do. They're habits. We don't think about them. That's why they're so hard to break. Because we don't even realize we're doing them. Some people have habits of speech. When I was growing up and I was a teenager, we used to say like all the time. I'm like so hot. It's like, my God, it's like the middle of summer and I'm like sweating here and I can't even like believe that it's so like hot. It was a, it's a habit of being a teenager in America at that time and it's just sort of how we all talked. And my parents used to make fun of me very light joking way. They didn't do it in a cruel way, but just to bring awareness to it. So I would say things like, could we, could we like have not like that for dinner, but like this? And, and mom, mom would say, like, maybe like, I don't know, like, maybe, and just, you know, to make me realize what I was doing. And I didn't even realize. But slowly, as I got older, you start to pay attention and you start to free yourselves of those, those sorts of habits. But habits by nature are things we do without thinking about them. So negative thinking is just that. It's a habit. We don't say, okay, now I want to have a negative thought. Hmm, what should it be? Well... I'm ugly, that could be one. I'm stupid, that could be one. I'm a failure, that's a good one. Let's go with failure. I did ugly yesterday, it doesn't have much sting. Failure has some sting, let's go with failure. We don't think about it like that. It just, they're habits. They're habits in the mind. We speak, in India about sanskaras, right? They're grooves. Scientifically, we speak about neural patterning, neural networks. Here we speak about sanskaras. It's the same thing. They're literally impressions. Impressions on my psyche. This is how we think. But like any habit, you can free yourself of it. But you have to first bring awareness to it. So the first thing to do is recognize that you are not your thoughts, okay? It's just a habit in your brain. Next, watch your thoughts. Sit down, close your eyes. Don't try to change them. Just watch them as an observer. And the benefit of that is you will realize as you're watching that you are not them. You are the one over here watching them. And you'll be able to see them as just these things happening in your brain, like bubbles. That's really what they are. It's just like if you ever see somebody blowing bubbles. And the bubble gets inflated, and then the bubble pops, and there's a bubble, and then it pops. That's how our thoughts are. So spend some time watching them to teach yourself, really, I'm not my thoughts. I'm watching my thoughts. I'm the one aware. I'm the one watching. I'm not the movie. I'm the one watching the movie. I'm not the actor in the TV show. I'm the one watching the actor in the TV show. I'm not the thought. I'm the one watching the thought. When you become simply aware of them, they lose that power to impact you a lot. Because then you just see them, oh yeah, another one, oh, another one, oh, another one. But then what you want to do is you want to 
give the mind something to do instead. Ideally with a very disciplined meditation practice. In general, the thoughts will become less and less because the mind will become stiller and stiller. But along the way, you need to give the mind something else to do. If you have a a baby or a puppy that's, you know, taking this and tearing it up and doing this and destroying this and ru- you can't just say sit down and shut up. They're not going to do it. Maybe for 30 seconds, as long as you've scared them, they will. And then in 30 more seconds, they'll be up doing their thing again. It's what babies do. It's what puppies do. So what do you do? You give them something else. You give them a toy that they can play with. Then they leave your carpet alone. So... In the same way, the mind needs to be given something. This is one of the most basic benefits of a practice of japa. It's got a lot of more powerful, deep benefits as well, but this is one of the most basic benefits. It gives the mind something to do. As long as you're chanting your mantra, you're not having negative thoughts, and you just chant and chant and chant until, and you can do it with your eyes open. Whatever you're doing in the world, you can chant your mantra at the same time. So you just keep chanting your mantra, chanting your mantra. And slowly that habit will change. But also along with that, I would suggest bring in some very direct thoughts. So If your negative thoughts tend to be about other people, develop a habit. When you first see someone, immediately find three positive things you can see about them. Every time you meet someone, every time you see them, first thing your mind knows, it has a task. Three positive things. Beautiful smile. Right? Whatever it may be. If it's somebody you know, it's easier. Someone you don't know, you're going to be stuck physically. Nice hair, nice smile. But immediately make the mind do something positive. And if it's more about yourself than about other people, then what you want to do is you want to come up with some very good daily affirmations. So if the negative self-talk is things like, I'm stupid, then you want to have an affirmation that says something like, I am absolutely brilliant in all of my areas of expertise. Right? It's not false. It doesn't say that you know everything in the world. It doesn't say you're the smartest guy on the planet. But it just reminds you that everything that you know about, you're brilliant. Or you could have something that says, my brain is an untapped tool of potential. Meaning you're just not using it enough. But come up with things, the opposite of what you're telling yourself. And then literally put them on sticky notes. Stick them on your bathroom mirror. Stick them everywhere. Make them be notifications, alarms on your mobile. It may sound silly. And you'll feel silly in the beginning. But the way that the subconscious works is the more you tell it something, the more that thing becomes its reality. If you think you're stupid, it's only because you or someone else told you that enough times that it went in. So correct the mistake. 
And slowly, slowly the patterns will change. 